The flag on the mountain. Someone has put up a flag on the mountain. It flaps and waves high above the lake, up where they helicopter logged a few years back. Getting up there must have taken gumption, and the scarlet and white, hard against the green, is a statement to that grit. Seeing that flag takes me back, as everything out on the land has a tendency to do. Victoria Day, 1965. I'd just been adopted and moved from Northern Ontario to Bradford, a small town an hour's drive from Toronto. By the time the holiday rolled around, I'd been in my new home about a month. I felt as though I'd been plunked down on Mars. There was nothing left of the world I had known for the first nine years of my life. Bradford was on the edge of Holland Marsh. There, the land was flat, treeless, devoted to the reaping of vegetables. The water flowed through the irrigation canal, canals, all brown and muddy. There was no bush, no pink granite outcroppings, no cliffs overlooking a lake, no open vistas. Life among the Martians felt restrictive and colorless. There was a gaping hole in me that I had once used. There was a gaping hole in me that I had once used the land to fill. In the school where they sent me, I was the only Indian kid. In fact, I was the only brown face. The Martians were pale with names like McLaughlin, Reed, Carpenter, and Wesley. Sitting in the tight, formal rows of Bradford Elementary School, I was weird, exotic, and more than a little uncomfortable. In the class photo from that year, I stuck out in the sea of white faces like a fence post in a field of snow. It was lonely, but there was no one to tell. I didn't know how to move in Bradford. It was a loopy feeling, like in a dream where every placing of your foot is weightless. The edges of my body had become blurred, and I couldn't find a space to hold me. Even the language, the colloquial urban schoolboy rap, was new and hard on my ears. Then one day, the teacher announced the upcoming Queen's birthday, as we called it then. She went on to explain that Bradford would raise a new, the new Canadian flag for the first time on the Friday before the holiday weekend. There would be a band, the mayor would speak, and a special ceremony would mark the raising of the brand new Canadian symbol which Prime Minister Pearson had pushed through Parliament several months earlier. The school wanted someone very special to raise the flag, the teacher said. The principal and the mayor had chosen me. She said my people represented the original face of Canada, and they wanted to honour that. But when the day came, I was nervous. There was going to be news photographer at the ceremony, and my picture would be in the paper. I was dressed in new clothes, and my shoes were shined. My adopted parents instructed me severely on how to behave. Up in front of that big crowd, I sat in my chair barely able to listen to the speeches. Then someone called my name. The band struck up the first notes of O Canada. My hands grasped the lanyard. As the song began to swell, I hauled on that rope. The flag inched up the pole, then caught in the breeze, fluttered and began to wave. As I watched it gain the sky, I, as I watched it gain the sky, I did feel honored. I was filled with a crazy sense of possibility, as if that flag could make anything happen. Right then, I believed that Canada was a wish, a breath waiting to be exhaled. I believed that the song was a blessing, the flag its standard. I believed as I'd been told by the teacher, that my people were special, that I was special, and that the blessings of the song and that flag fell equally on my shoulders, the true North strong and free. Since then, I've learned that the national anthem can be a dirge at time, a wail, a cry in the night. I've learned that hidden in the thunder of the trumpets and the snap of the drums are common voices hollering to be heard. The flag is a symbol of the separation between red and white. It's hugely ironic because of that. But I love this country. I love that flag. The majority of Native people do. Every land claim, every barricade, every protest is less of a harangue for rights and property than it is a beseeching for the promise offered in that flag, represented by it. Equality. A shared vision. vision a shared responsibility. A wish. A held breath waiting to be exhaled. The flag above the lake flaps in the breeze of this mountain morning over everything, over everyone.